I remember the day that changed my life. That day I had prepared for for so many years, leaving behind my family, my friends, back home in Egypt. Seeking a master's and PhD degree um, at the Technical University of Munich chemistry department. Yes, I wanted so much to do basic sciences. I went and had a degree in organometallic chemistry. At that moment, um, when I went out of this room where I had the panel of chemistry professors asking me these questions and allowing me only 10 minutes to talk about my research topic, I had the feeling I would never finish. But I made it. And when I moved out of this room, I had people celebrating with me, applauding, telling me, yes, I made it. They were witnessing that I was qualified according to German standards. But during that celebration, I actually had only one thought in mind. I wanted so much to go back to my home, to deliver all the messages I received, to transfer the knowledge, <coughs> to build up a lab, to have my own students. I went back to the Faculty of Engineering at Chams University. But the only message I received there was, oh, you did organometallics, basic sciences? We are not really sure what this is good for. You'd better go back and do something useful. It took me a while to get over this. Five months later, I was back to the same chemistry department at the the Technical University of Munich, but for this time for a postdoc position in construction chemistry, uh, cementing and additives. The Petroleum Institute of Abu Dhabi started a collaboration with the Technical University of Munich, and I was invited to coordinate this collaboration. So again, I moved to Abu Dhabi. I learned everything about petroleum chemistry. Yes, I did lots of different things, working on different topics with different tools and applications, like mitigating asphaltines and scale deposits that would plug pipelines and prevent petroleum production. I would even uh, work on corrosion aspects, on radioactivity in the oil field, so many different things. My research publication list became really colorful, really diverse. But then one day, I went back home, I prepared for dinner, I was having this delicious lamb casserole, wrapping it up into, you know, aluminum foil, putting it in the oven, and I was like, is this really safe what I'm doing right now? I know that aluminum might oxidize, especially at higher temperatures, but was this really safe? Am I consuming this aluminum that it's leached into the food? Lots of questions, and I really became curious. I needed answers. So, beside my usual business as a organometallic construction petroleum chemist, I started to dig further into food chemistry, just for fun. Yes, this is what I did. I started to take all these aluminum sheets and put them under this sophisticated environmental scanning electro microscope, looking at the patterns, what is happening with different food combinations, different temperatures, different uh, like pH, like higher alkalinity, higher acidity. What would actually happen? And then I even took this to my lab and I started to bring in all my um, uh, assistants working on this and trying to find solutions and guess what we published the results so what actually started out as science for fun became or turned into a really serious thing aluminum leaching might not uh, be an, an issue if it's just consumed once or twice I mean if it but if it uh, on a daily basis if it's uh, accumulated in your body, then it would definitely exceed WHO regulations. So you'd imagine families, millions of families, are using aluminum foil to wrap up their food, put them in the oven. And more than this, they would even use aluminum cookware as the most popular uh, material ever used, especially also in, in, developing, in the developing world. So, 
uh, yes, it has replaced, aluminum has replaced copper because it's cheaper to produce and it's easier to clean. While copper oxide would, is toxic and would definitely need to be removed, aluminum oxide is actually giving you this inert surface that would prevent aluminum leaching into food. So, but how can you teach millions of people not to scrub their aluminum pots while they're used to it? Food safety has become one of the main concerns of the global community. We have just started to investigate the uh, enormous impact of industrialization on human health and, of course, the diseases of aging. So, I started to dig further at what is the relationship between aluminum leaching and potential diseases like Alzheimer's disease. 27 million people around this globe are affected by Alzheimer's and this number is going to increase. So, aluminum is not only found in pots, it's also found in water because it's used as a coagulant, as aluminum sulfate for uh, cleaning water. My background actually in uh, organometallic chemistry provided me with some informed ideas to reinvent the membrane technology. So actually now, um, I am very positive that Egypt is going to provide a new product into the market which is competitive to current schemes of water purification. So I hope that um, I could show that my organometallics background actually was useful. I shared my journey with you. You might be inspired to go and have your own business. Do whatever you can to prevent this aluminum from further spreading. This, um, spreading. You can even think of a company that would produce antiperspirants, for example, that are aluminum-free, or cosmetics that are free of aluminum. You might even think of a material that can replace aluminum cookware, or even start a campaign that raises awareness of the society towards aluminum hazards and the potential risks associated to it. These are just some ideas of mine, and I really hope you would take them and go do something useful. Thank you.